Daniel's performance tonight was so good. It's like I almost wonder if he has to be in the conversation for best fighter in the world because that was a pretty dominant performance against a really good guy who had never been I dominant. Like it that. was unbelievable. I mean, I agree. He looked he looked amazing tonight. You know, it's funny. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to throw Kane under the bus here, but you know, I'm sitting there talking to Kane and, and and he's jumping from side to side and doing all the stuff he was doing with Hendo. And I go, does he have any submissions? And, and Kane goes, eh. You know, he's like, he's like, he goes, you see that arm lock he tried? He goes, he's got the arm lock and everything. And right after we say it, he rear naked choked him, you know. So uh, he, he looked unbelievable tonight. Uh, Dan, can you talk a little bit about doing, you know, a lot of people, of course, are saying, well, Hendo was not nearly as big as you in size. It was a big difference in the fight. You said in the cage you thought you could do that to John Jones. Uh, why, why do you believe you could? And do you feel like if you got the fight that you're ready to beat him now? Well, I mean, you know, it's like, Styles make fights, man. I mean, I was going to fight Rashad Evans in February, and I've said on record, I think in the division, I think Rashad Evans is a tougher fight for me because of his, of his ability to wrestle. And, and I've seen Rashad compete since 2000 when we were in college. Um, for Jones, I mean, it's, it's a, that's a tough hill to climb, man. There's no just beating John Jones. You know, I'd, I'd have to have my best performance. And um, knowing that I was fighting for the UFC title, I would train as though I need to have my best performance. So... I just think that Styles make fights, and him and you know I match up well with him. You know we haven't really seen him on his back for an extended period of time, but if I get on top of him, I think I can hold him down and and get some offense off. And just curious, your thought then? You know, would you rather Jones beat Gustafsson so you would actually get to face Jones, who a lot of people think is the best in the world, or does it not matter to you? You just want to fight for the title. I mean, I, I want to be the champion. You know, I mean that that's really why I started fighting. You know, I'm 35 years old. It's not like I'm a kid. You know. I, I can't wait too long, but, you know, it, it means something to beat John Jones. You know, I mean, I know uh, Dana, you know, we all praise Alexander Gustafson for what he's done. Um, he's a great fighter, but um, there, it, it means a little bit more to beat a John Jones. It's like TJ tonight beating Henan Burrell, or look at what Chris Weidman beating Anderson Silva did. If uh, anybody else was the champion, I don't think it would have had the impact that, that it did. So, yeah, I would prefer for Jones to still be the champion. And last question for you. Can you just uh, elaborate on why you would want to wait? I mean, you've been a guy that said you want to fight and you want to, you know, keep going. Now Dana says you want to wait. What, what would factor into that decision? Well, I mean, you know, I just think that at a point, you know, you, you, you look at your resume and, and um, I, I've, earned a, I've earned a title shot. I've, I've got five top ten wins. I've, I've been, I'm undefeated. I haven't lost a round. I haven't lost a fight. In two Nobody, weight classes, too. In two weight classes. You know, I, 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 I won the Strike Force Grand Prix. I fought Bigfoot after a year and a half in the sport. I mean, my resume speaks for itself, you know, so, and you got to remember, guys, like, this is my fifth fight in the last, like, 15 months, you know, so I fight every three months or so. Daniel, going into this fight, you said you believed your wrestling was going to be superior to Dan Henderson's. That was uh, obviously the case. But was there anything that surprised you personally once you got into that exchange about how easy it was? Was it about the level that you anticipated? Well, I mean, you know, you, you never underestimate a guy like Dan Henderson, but... Um, I just believe in my skill. You know, it's something I spent a lifetime accomplishing. You know, when most kids were summers and when they were 15, 16 years old, summers hanging out at the, the lake and stuff, I was wrestling overseas in the world championship. So it's, it's my sport. It's the thing that I've done my entire life, and I believe in it 100%. And just to clarify uh, what was mentioned earlier about waiting for a title shot, uh, you told me this week uh, when I interviewed you, that that you believe that should John Jones lose his title to Alexander Gustafson, mm -hmm. that he would probably de be deserving of a rematch. So it's one thing if Jones retains the title and then you get that title shot, but should Jones lose the belt, do you at that point rethink the idea of waiting and take another fight? Yeah, I've got to just get back to work because, you know, John Jones is a, is a great champion. He's defended that title more than anybody ever has. And if he lost, it, you know, he deserves a rematch, just like Anderson Silva did. Those guys have, have earned the right to fight for the title as many times as they want, you know. So, yeah, I would definitely fight again. I'm not saying I'm opposed to just fighting. I'm just saying that I think after four years, four and a half years of the sport, what I've accomplished, you know, that I think I deserve a title shot. But as Dana said, you know, we're going to talk, and, and if they come up with something good, I'll, I'll fight. I mean, I'm not, I'm not afraid of anybody. I mean, I can beat every one of these guys, so I'm, I'll fight them all.